Guess who has not one, but two scanner room HUD chips? When that happened? How did I do that? What was I drinking? Okay, so we want a compass. This is not where you make a compass. I probably built that thinking it was the compass because I'm a loon. All right, equipment. There's a bunch here. There's the compass. Yeah, what if Wander rams the cuttlefish with a sea moth? Then I'm a monster and no one is surprised. Okay, so now I've got the compass. That should help. Okay, Simith. Oh, Simith is here. All right, Earthworm Tim, it's time for us to go around. All systems online. Okay. Oh! I can now tell which direction I'm pointing. Yeah, I think this is a fine speed. Admittedly, if it turns out that, uh... I've already done that one. If it does turn out that I, uh... I made a goof by doing this, and Leviathans are going to be able to catch me, then I'll probably change things a bit, but, uh... Whatever. Okay, so I missed a data box in here. I'm not sure how? But I'll double check it. Or is that, th is it that freaking data box like right there? It is. Okay, so we got the Cyclops Depth Module, Mark 1. Oh. Well, that's exactly what I needed. Alright, let's turn you back on. So what do we do next? I wanted to check some of the deep stuff. I'd like to check around this. But actually, let's head for Life Pod 2. Which is admittedly on the opposite side of the map, but I'm pretty dang fast. So I'm not too worried about it. I think I'm going to kind of start pushing towards an ending on this. Uh, maybe? I mean, is there anything else I should be immediately focusing on, guys? But too bad you can't add scanner modules to the Seamoth. It would be nice if you could actually have, like, a, a limited range scanner module or something. Or if I could, like, have a, uh, a scanner beacon generator setup that I'd, like, plonk down and it's big. So that sort of thing would be kind of cool. Yeah, work on the story. This is true. I, I just like... So part of it is I did almost all the resource gathering, super grinding on my first series on this game. And while it was kind of fun to explore like that, I, it did get a little bit slow and repetitive. And so that's part of the reason why I went so gung-ho on alchemy this time around. Because it felt like, you know, yeah, I can actually... Ow. Well, that was... Poorly timed. Okay, I've already been in this one. Uh, let's see. Yeah, that's why I've been doing alchemy so hard on this one. Because, like, I really don't want to, like, just be tootling around in the Cyclops looking for a handful of diamonds or... You know, handful of diamonds or, you know, seven truckloads of lithium because it's an extremely demanding thing. Having, a, having enough to feed all of that. Is there a way to turn off your UI while you're going in the sub, except for maybe the top stuff?
Because, yeah, I'm not trying to say that this is, like, terribly boring or repetitive, but I'm less interested in grabbing resources, technically. Oh. Okay, so I do actually have a grabber arm. I can grab things. Outside the, uh, the sub. Now, is a warper still trying to get at me? I don't see it. Oh, there it is. Can you zap a warper? And also, question, do warpers always attack you, or if I hop out of my sub, uh, will it leave me alone? Because it looks like it's gone. Okay, so they will they will attack me. Let's see, stasis rifle plus knife works on warpers. Good to know. I do have the stasis rifle. I did remember to uh Okay, so it will not leave me alone. I did remember to bring the stasis rifle along this time around. Data. Right, he's back. <laughs> he warped me, but I don't see him. It's a good time to scan a warper. I kind of wish you'd learn cool tech by scanning these things. Alright. Bad time for a hair to be in my mouth. I'm gonna get stabby. Street justice. Get out of here. Get out of here. There you go. That's what you get. That's what you get. Alright. Well, we had that. I think we. I think we got everything there. Let me know if I missed anything. It looks like it's only one data pad. I should probably. Yeah, careful. Those guys really hurt. I do have the reinforced. I do have the reinforced. Uh, not pad. Uh, the reinforced suit, so it's not so bad. But, yeah. That is entirely valid. Oh, did I catch a leech? Is it on the outside of my... Is it on the outside of my ship or the outside of my suit? And how do I get it off? Where is it? Uh... I, I don't know. Okay, so the life pod's just a beacon for the cave in front of me. Alright, so where do we go next? Because, beacon-wise, I'm going to turn off that scanner room. Pretty big scan. Maybe what we do is head for the proposed Degasi habitat and build a scanner room or two. Um, yeah, I'm just trying to decide what I even want to work on on the surface. Like, is there anything that I should be doing here or just putts? I guess, honestly, we can just scoot around for a little while.
Problem is, I do want to make sure I don't run into foul of any ghost leviathans. I'm probably fast enough to avoid them, but I'd hate to lose this thing. I put a lot of resources into maxing it out. That's probably the edge. If I had a guess. It's a nice little zone. Holy shit. Oh. That must be the Ghost Leviathan going out there. I'm going to leave him and them and everyone involved alone. Yeah, so we can go check out the Hella Caves around here. It's mildly tempted. Or mildly tempting? I just like, I feel like I, if I wanted to, I could actually go uh, almost immediately for some kind of end here. Was that a sand shark? Damn it. Scared the shit out of me. I'm like, I don't hear anything bad. So I'm going to assume we're fine. Loads of sand sharks around here. Yeah, so why don't we why don't we go go do I'm gonna go load up the uh Cyclops, I think, maybe. Get a couple of scanner rooms, maybe? Maybe not. I mm. Or do we just load up on, on the Cyclops? Erosion patterns on the land masses suspended here suggest they once floated on the surface. The thing I'm trying to decide is like, do I do I go full bore on the Cyclops? Oh, let's see, can you get power from the geothermal vents? I can, but I can also just get power from uh, existing somewhere near the top. My engine efficiency is so freaking high. Uh, that there's pretty much no chance of me running out of power here. It'd be nice to get a scanning room over there. Okay, let's go back. Let's upgrade my, my Cyclops. Uh, out of sheer curiosity, how much damage can a, uh, Cyclops sustain? Like, do they, do they just get sunk? Do they get blown up? Because part of the reason why I've been a bit leery about using one of those is I'd be effectively riding in a in a giant, uh, tomb. If they get caught. Because originally the Reapers would just kind of look at them disprovingly, but couldn't do anything to them now. But now that- now it can get wrecked. And so, like, I'm- I'm mildly leery of having one. Oh, they can explode? Uh... Okay, so just get the Mark III efficiency in the shield mod, and you'll be fine. All right. Because it's kind of one of those where it's like, I hate losing Welcome things. I'm not very gracious about losing my belongings. I mean, I kind of am. But in video games, more so, it's a it is a problem. So the idea of, like... Having the thing explode on me because some uh, leviathan would wouldn't leave me alone. It's like, uh, yeah. oh well. 
Okay, so what do we what do we need for anything? Cyclops upgrade. So depth module, Mark II, Mark Three. I thought I picked up. Oh no no no, we don't have it yet. Let's go pop mods out of the Cyclops and see what I need. So the shield protects you as long as you have power. Well then. Online. I'm just gonna mod the crap out of this this thing, and then we'll go check uh, check out where to go next. Okay, so sonar upgrade, very helpful. Let's take off these two. Okay, hi. Sun charger, decoy tube, fire suppression system might be useful. Here's vehicles docked with the Cyclops. The idea of it is interesting, but the execution, eh. So let's get the shield generator. And depth module. Hey, 1300 power out of 200 is uh, nice. Yeah, I don't know how that happened. It just kind of did. I'm not in the habit of questioning these things terribly hard. Question, can you actually get multiple efficiency modules? I guess actually, let's get a fire suppression system just because. And also... Check my base builder. Oh, for the... Wait, hold on. Oh. I could just get more- oh. Okay. Uh, that's kind of nuts. But I'll take it. So yeah, we have more upgrade slots. The main question is, do I have more mods that I can even... Do they even stack? Well, in that case, I can just throw in the shield and fire suppression. This seems... Huh. Uh, yeah, so... Fair... Fair uh, admittance. I mod the hell out of my games. It makes it a little bit easy, but it makes it way more fun for me. Uh, it's always been this case. I apologize? Because, like, I realize people probably want, like, a, a more regular experience. I'm just... I don't know. I like making weird Garbo <laughs> builds and stuff. I, I love, like, when science gets out of control in these games and you can do, like, insane junk left and right. Okay, so efficiency does... N oh. It should... It doesn't. Eh. But, like, I had played the base game more or less up until the end, so except for, like, the very end stuff, which I could kind of gimp myself for, or not... Okay, so what do we need? Gold, copper wire. What do we need for copper wire? Oh. We just already have it. So we just need creep vine seed clusters. I don't know. I just will always like mod mod the bejesus out of any game I play if I can. At some point, I'd like to play, uh... I'd like to play Don't Starve again. Potentially Don't Starve together if I can actually get some other people. Uh... But that's tough? I don't know. Let me see. And so, like, the idea of, uh... Playing that with some heavy mods should be kind of fun. I don't know. I, I've done it a couple of times, and it was 
it was really enjoyable. The problem is just nobody else had the interest to keep going past, like, a couple of, like, immediate, uh... The first couple, like, weeks? Like, once you hit winter, or, like, the middle of winter, everybody else loses mind. Or, loses their minds, and, like, is just like, nah, don't want to do anymore. Or, like, might crash it once or twice, and everyone's like, nope, game's broken, not anymore. Let's see, is Shell not into Don't Starve? Shell's not that into games without, like, an immediate story. Uh, and admittedly, Don't Starve does actually have one, but... It's still... Like, Shell's much more of a Dragon Age kind of person. Like, sh at some point, she'll probably do a, a Dragon Age Inquisition or Origins or all of them. Yeah. Yeah, she's big on characters and stories and places and so on and so forth. And I can't fault her for that. Oh, yeah. She is very big on KOTOR. Okay, Cyclops Thermal Reactor. That might not be a bad idea. Personally, I'm kind of a mix. I like... I like stories in games. I think it just, uh, a lot of very story-based games tend to lose, tends to lose me on the, not the delivery, the, uh... Okay, so I gotta figure out what I need to get Kyanite, it looks like. Maybe get a thermal reactor. Oh god, some of these are insane. Two batteries. Wait, do I not have a Cyclops solar, solar charger? I, oh, I already have the Mark II. Okay, so we do have to make a thermal reactor, and we've got to get some more for more ki ah kyanite for both. Okay, can I can I make the thermal reactor here? No, so we actually don't have the ability to make it. But yeah, so stuff like don't starve, not exactly her her cup of tea. But that's fine. Like, I'm honestly in no rush to immediately play Don't Starve. They keep adding more to the game, so it's kind of like, eh, at some point. Let's see, a good storyline in a game can save save it. Look at Elder Scrolls. I'm honestly not sure if Elder Scrolls' storyline is what saves the game. Uh-oh. Oh. Like, honestly, I have almost never completed either. I think the reason why Elder Scrolls is actually... Oh, we, we don't have any quartz? Really? I guess we have neither. Okay. Uh, I don't think I've ever actually finished Skyrim. I don't think I've ever even gotten close to Skyrim, but I've put in, like, a lot of hours into it. Uh, hell, I haven't even finished Fallout 4, and I have, like, multiple hundred hours? Into into it, which kind of I'd say kind of sucks, but I don't know. Like I feel bad for not finishing uh, the story on the game. It's just like never interested me. Is it time to farm quartz? Yes, farm, literally farm. Let's see. Yeah, for me. I, I want to say almost one of the perfect kinds of games for me is, yeah, to some degree Subnautica handles a lot of things incredibly well. Uh, another easy example would be like Dragon Quest Builders. Yeah, this would be close to DQ Builders. Yeah, in a very weird way, Dragon Quest Builders is the closest possible comparison I can give you to... Uh, The closest possible comparison I can give you to Subnautica, which is such a weird statement to make. And I know the Japanese version of it is out now, and it's like, I want to play it, but I should probably just wait. Because it'll be out in English eventually, and then I'll actually do a proper series. Okay, uh, let's see. I actually don't know where to get Kyanite from. I probably shouldn't be giving it to myself. On the other hand, oh well. Oh, 
Let's do one more, and then go make some quartz. Yeah, Dragon Quest Builders will always remain one of probably my top games of all time, just because it's... I don't know, it was just really charming. I wish it, it didn't keep resetting your progress, though. That uh, drove me a bit nutter. Okay, Kainite is the most in-game material. Yeah, I figured. I... I apologize. We'll go find some. I promise that. I just might have, uh... There he is, just farming Kyanite. Yup. Alchemy is, uh, nonsense. Okay, Cyclops Engine Efficiency Module. Uh, let's see, we've already got that. Can I get the Death Module? Perfect. And now we can just go do whatever we want. And hope my Cyclops doesn't get kablooied. Yeah, we still don't have the thermal reactor. But yeah, to be totally honest, I, I do have like 30, 40 episodes? I, I actually honestly don't remember how many episodes I had when I left off uh, my first series, but I straight up was like at the ending. I hadn't cured myself or anything, but like I was in the lava area, and I don't think there's a whole lot else apart from that. All systems online. Okay, so what are we doing? We're doing mods. So what what mods should I even be jamming into this thing? What more mods are there? Okay, engine efficiency is 600%. Crush depth is 1,700 meters, which I think is absolute bottom. We could get some decoys. What else, what else can we get? I guess I'd have to make the decoys. That's, that's the one problem. Well, it makes the, uh, let's make the speed boost. Okay, does not stack. It looks like the engine efficiency modules might stack. Okay, if I put, well, I'm going to put this in. Okay, so it doesn't look like extra engine efficiency modules do anything. That is unfortunate, but it does make it faster. I'll take it. I might turn it off. We'll, we'll see how it goes. So where do we make the decoys from? Because at this point, I'm just kind of adding whatever. Load decoys here. Uh, is it under deployables? I'm assuming it's creature decoys. Okay. Cool. I'll just hold on to those. So what do we do next? There's the fire suppression system. Uh, speed. I guess actually, easy option. Really long option. Advanced theories. Alien eggs. Okay, so let's actually start looking at some lore for a bit. So, alien eggs. Evidence suggests that a substantial number, if not all of the local species, reproduce through egg laying. Eggs can be found resting on the seafloor, buried beneath detritus, or even wedged into cracks in the rock. Different species likely favor different biomes as their nesting grounds. Eggs discovered in the wild are in some form of natural stasis, likely awaiting ideal conditions which to hatch, or the delivery of some vital enzyme, which will kickstart the process. It's impossible to calculate this species of egg from the exterior. However, it may be possible to simulate, stimulate a hatching response if an egg is relocated to a suitable alien containment unit. 
Specimen with symptoms of infection. The organism is displaying signs of bacterial infection. The bright green blisters are forming in networks around the infection sites. Pa patho pathology suggests a waterborne bacterium capable of penetrating the body through the skin and respiratory system. Underlying indications of genetic mutation and aggressive behavior. Bacterium itself is unlike any so far recorded in human exploration. May be contagious. Contagious. Avoid. Do not, under any circumstances, consume the flesh. Too late. Okay, so don't care about those data downloads. Scan I oh, these things. Okay. I don't know what I should be reading, so I'm just probably going to go through a lot of the audio logs. But we'll look through what a uh, what seems interesting. It's a purple tablet. This carbon-based device is lighter than it looks and features a symbol which resembles a U, lit up in purple. Despite the onboard power still functioning, algae growth on the exterior indicates it was abandoned hundreds, perhaps thousands of years ago. While the technology is far beyond Federation levels, there's no obvious way to interface with it. It should nonetheless be possible to fabricate a precise physical copy of the device if necessary. Orange tablet hums slightly displays an orange-lit symbol resembling an N. It may offer a way to interact with compatible technologies. Okay. Terminal data. Alien terminal. Discovered inside the alien facility, it was not possible to translate any useful information. However, scans have returned some information on the device itself. It's likely a solid-state computer, although there is no clear way to interface with it. On approach, it began producing a low-frequency radio wave containing complex but recognizable data patterns. It's likely that the alien species which designed this technology evolved or genetically selected sensory apparatus to hear and understand the information being broadcast by the device and to communicate back. The mental processing power required to perform this kind of telepathy would imply the designers were considerably more psychologically developed than the common human. 